we have John's field sermon or attack on the Pharisees and scribes, but also in Luke his uh, attack on the masses coming out the scene. Again, I submitted to you that I would assume John did not attack the masses. He might have attacked the upper class, which would be more uh, believable, Matthew 3, uh, 7. But in Luke 3, 7, this is changed to the uh, upper class as offspring of vipers. I can read you the Dead Sea Scrolls, and uh, I can tell you here that in the same document that we had the root of planting, we have the offspring of vipers several times. Um, directed against the upper class. So again, it's another thing that ties the scrolls in with um, with what we know about uh, John and also uh, uh, further solidifies the chronological ambience. Uh, let me see, it's in, uh, I think, um, uh, column five here. Um, Furthermore, they defile their Holy Spirit, open their mouth with a blasphemy of, of uh, 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 tongue against, uh, against the uh, laws of the covenant of God, saying they are not sure. In other words, they undermine the Torah. They speak an abomination concerning them. They are all kindlers of the fire and lighters of the brand, Isaiah 50, 11. Their webs are spider's webs, and their eggs are the offspring of vipers, Isaiah uh, 69, uh, 5. That is column 5. No man that approaches them shall be free from their uh, guilt. And the more he does so, the guiltier he shall be unless he was forced. Uh, and then we go on and so on and so forth. So the upper class is being condemned here for their sins of uh, fornication and uh, uh, sleeping with women in their periods and things like that, which is Herodium in behavior we could show. But here, uh, the offspring of vipers language, it actually gives you the biblical reference, Isaiah 59, 5. Now there's a... Uh, uh, 59. Um, there's another one further along. It's hard for me to follow. This is not my translation. It's hard for me to follow it. Uh, let me see if I can find this other one which talks about, um, this is in column 8, I think, if I can find it. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's see, here it is. Oh, here it is. Again, condemning the upper class. Uh, it says here, at the time of the former visitation, we have lots of visitations of God. Uh, usually it's for vengeance, but sometimes it's to make a root of planting grow. Um, they were given up to the sword and all the members of his covenant who did not hold Stephanie fast. It's always pro-covenant, pro-Torah. They shall be visited for destruction. Uh, that shall be the day when God will visit, uh, as it was said, the princes of Judah have become like those who remove the bond, Hosea 5.10. Wrath will be poured out on them. Uh, they are all rebels. They have not turned from the way of traitors, traitor language, but have wallowed in all the ways of fornication and evil riches, and have taken revenge and borne malice, each man not loving his brother, but hating his brother. And every man of them has sinned against near kin, that is, uh, fornicated with nieces, which is the, something that the scrolls uh, condemn, and so, so, something that the, uh, and close family cousins, uh, something the Herodian aristocracy can read to Josephus did constantly. So I would submit to you the princes of Judah here are the Herodians. In normal Hormon <coughs> studies, they're supposed to be the Maccabeans, but there's no indication that the Maga Maccabeans indulged in niece marriage or fornicated with close key, kin. Uh, and approached them for unchastity, and has acted arrogantly for the sake of riches, nor that they were very rich. Herod was extremely rich. And every man had done what seemed right in his own eyes, and chosen the stubbornness of the heart, and they did not keep apart from the peoples, that is, the non-Jews, and have willfully rebelled by walking in the ways of wicked, of whom God said, Their wine is the venom of serpents, the cruel poison of asps. Deuteronomy 32-33. The serpents are the kings of the people. Now the analysis of it. The kings of the peoples in Roman jurisprudence is the title that was made for the petty kings in the east like the Herodians. 
because the Romans had taken the West, Spain, Italy, and Greece, and made it into direct Roman provinces. But from Asia Minor further east in Syria and Palestine, they had left the local kings in control as tax farmers. Therefore, we have various small kingdoms in Asia Minor, northern Syria, and in Palestine, and the title in Roman jurisprudence for them are kings of the peoples. So to my mind, there's another QED putting this in the first century that we are using Roman juridical language to apply and also identifying these uh, these uh, people as the Herodians. In any case, it, let us say they are the Herodians. The serpents are the kings of the people. Their wine is their ways. The head of the ass is the <coughs> chief of the kings of Greek, and I think you Greece, and I think you see what you're talking about there is the fact that most of them speak Greek, the chief of the Greek-speaking kings, and also that yain, in wine in Hebrew, is the same as yavan, Greek, Greece. So they're playing off that, but anyway, that's just, uh, something you can argue about, who came to wreak vengeance on them. There is only one big king of these petty, small Greek-speaking kings, and that's the Roman emperor. In any case, that's something you could do. Uh, but we have here, you see, that the serpents are the kings of the people, and the wine is their, their ways, and the head of the asps is the chief of these petty Greek-speaking kings who rule over here, the kings of the peoples. So this wine, so this asp, uh, vipers, and so on language is also applied to the ruling establishment. You have to decide which it is in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Um, okay. Now, as Luke goes on here, he says, line 9, And even now, the axe is laid under the root of the trees. There we got the root again. Uh, and everything that bringeth forth good fruit is, is okay, but every bad fruit shall be cast into a furnace of fire. All of uh, these are always being cast into a furnace of fire. And the publicans come. And the soldiers come, and so on. So it's some sort of uh, uh, field sermon, as I said, that one writer portrayed it as being, at least in Luke. But then he says, Then will come one is mightier than I, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to untie. He shall baptize you as you with the Holy Ghost and fire, whose fan is in, the, uh, is, is in his hand, to cleanse his threshing floor, floor, to gather the wheat into the garner, but the ch chaff he will burn up with an unquenchable fire. Uh, so that's the rest of John's uh, uh, sermon or talk here as a Luke. But quickly, what is this shoe latchet, uh, shoelace uh, issue referring to? 